What is going on guys? This is all gaming with my review of Black Bullet Episode 1. In this series, I definitely heard a few good things about it. So when I heard that again in the anime, I was definitely excited about that. And now that I watched the episode, you know, the very first one, I am definitely liking this series. So of course I have to, I have to bring this review to you guys because I can already say that I'm definitely going to review the entire anime right, right here and now. Because to me, this first episode, it was pretty freaking awesome. So our episode starts off with we see that the humans here, most of them look like they are very poor and we see now that there's just one child that is walking around and, and he has a blanket around his body and we can see that you know he, he, he he's actually missing a shoe so he's walking around with like one shoe on and a sock on the other foot and we see that that, that the other people that are, are living here or wherever this like area is we see that they're all kind of like in a very poor area and we see like there are like a lot of tents around and there's like this huge fire going on where I'm guessing you know that they could all use for like warmth and so then we see like these two jets that look very high tech they were like flying around but we see now that, that in the sky we see like this kind of like monster falling down and crashing onto the ground now and we see that everybody on the ground kind of like panicking and they're running away but we see that 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 this uh this creature, it actually you know falls down to where to where the people were like living, and so this one kid, who who, who, who they were like focusing on, his name is uh, is Rentaro. We see now that somebody told him to survive, so they were like no way he was definitely gonna die, and so now we skip ten years now, where we see that you know that the uh, the people or wherever he is right now, they are definitely living in better conditions because we saw before that everybody was kind of like poor here and they, they didn't really have much, but now we see like all the buildings around and this city, it looks nor it looks very normal like any other one. And so now we see that Rentaro, he's now grown up and he's become a, a, a civil officer. And so now he actually went into this like apartment complex where some incident went down. And of course, when he showed these people, you know, these regular cops, his card, like, I believe that this one detective or inspector, he was actually surprised to see that, you know, somebody so young as him was actually, you know, a civil officer. Because he even said that, you know, this guy was a, was a kid. And so apparently, Rentaro here, he does not work alone, as he has his partner. And we see now, in a very quick flashback, we see that his partner here fell off his bike and so now she got left behind but we see that when they catch up with all the other cops we see that two of them already went inside the place where they shouldn't have because they should have waited for Rancharo and his partner but now because they went in they have lost all connection with them so they have no they had no idea what's going on but it's pretty obvious that, that they're dead and so Rancharo here he's like quick to act and he kicks down the door and we see now that, you know, the, the two officers that had went inside, their bodies were like pinned, like pinned against the wall. And so we see this like mysterious man that's like wearing this mask to cover his face. And right away you could tell that, you know, he's a bad guy. And he had the problem admitting that. And so we see right away when Taro here, he actually goes to, goes to fight this man. And I gotta say, the, uh, the action sequence in the series is pretty freaking badass. Like, the animation in it is definitely good. I was digging that. And Rentaro actually has some pretty cool moves. And so we see now that, you know, while he's busy, you know, fighting, the, fi fighting this man, we have the other, like, the other cops coming in there as well. And, and this man here, who was definitely responsible for this, because he even admits that, he actually gets a phone call. And so while he was on the phone, he had his back turn where the other cops came in, and he, and he just took him out one by one. It was like a single shot was able to kill all these men. So clearly this guy is definitely, you know, powerful. And so we see Rentaro, he, he had to, you know, to quickly stop him. And we see now that there was one good kick. He was actually able to not only break this guy's neck, but he turned his head completely around, and that right there was freaking epic. I'm not gonna lie, that right there was definitely digging a lot. But we see that you know this guy right here, he is definitely not human, as, as, as he was able to like turn his head back around, and so now he plans on leaving, and we don't know his name, but we know that he plans on you know destroying the world, and apparently nobody can stop him. And even though Rentaro now definitely seems like the guy. That was able to like to come to to fight him. 
it seemed that even he can't do a thing, you know, against them. Because we saw that every time Rentaro went to go attack this guy, he was either able to, you know, to just dodge it or he even, like, block his attacks completely. And so, oh, and he he was definitely also shocked as well that Rentaro was able to, you know, break his neck like that because he thought that he, that he would not land a hit. So I believe that that right there might make this guy interested in Rentaro, but I definitely know that we're not done with him yet. And so now that he's gone, we see that, you know, like the uh, inspector here and the other and the other officer that, that arrived, I feel like that they don't believe, you know, Rotaro's story because we all know that he jumped off and he, he had jumped out the window and they were on the fourth floor, I believe. And so, so clearly now, you know, it's, it's kind of hard to believe that, you know, somebody can't survive a fall like that, but they didn't see when Rotaro here had broke this guy's neck. So I can understand why they're a little doubtful, but clearly they they uh, definitely need to be on guard right now. And so then we have this this uh this little girl who is actually Montaro's partner, and we see now while she was like walking to catch up to him, she was definitely angry, and she actually says that 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 she is Montaro's fiance, and so now we see some some man who is definitely badly hurt. We see now that he asked this little girl here for for help. Because he actually, you know, like this guy was an officer who was actually attacked by a creature. Because we saw another, you know, quick flashback of some kind of like spider, you know, jumping on him. And so now this little girl here was saying that there was nothing she can do for him because it was like already too late. And we see now that this guy, once he realized what happened to him, his body starts to transform. And we see now fall over in pain. And just out of nowhere, we have the, 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 the things could come out of his back, and we see right in his last few moments he asked for help, but it was like way too late. And we see now that his body, he has transformed into you know a giant you know yellow or a golden spider, however you want to call it. He is definitely not human anymore, but we see now that that this uh this this girl here, she she actually planning on fighting him, but the spider has surprised her by like shooting out its web, which kind of like trapped her. And so after we after we thought that you know he had dealt with the girl, we see that Rentaro and the and, and the uh, and the and the officer had came, and Rentaro was definitely going to like deal with it, but the officer stepped in and shot it first. And we actually learned that you know these uh these gastria, I believe that's how you say it, like these beings or, or the virus, they cannot be harmed by regular bullets. But Rentaro here and his gun, he actually has these uh, these black bullets, and they were actually able to stop the spider from regenerating. So you know it can't actually be hurt. And so we see this 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 little girl here, she actually gets up, and she like finishes off the spider, and she has this like crazy strength. It's kind of insane, you know, how strong she is. But she was able to you know like take out the spider, and we see now that it it just left in pieces. But after they were done dealing with that, it seems that when Taro was like planning on going somewhere, because we had the little girl whose name is Enju, she was asking him if, if he had you know enough if, if he had time now to catch this like limited time sale on these bean sprouts. So he kind of like left the scene, and we see now that you know he was so concerned about this sale, he didn't finish his own job because we see that the uh, the spider the spider remains they were left there, and not only that, those black bullets. And I do know that I do know that they they do have a, a different name, but right now it escapes me. But I do know that you know the metal that that, that they're made out of, the viruses, you know the the, the gastria, they don't they don't like that at all. And so now we see he was definitely in time for the sale, but because he had left his job, you know, in, in such a poor condition, he got in trouble with his boss, who was also you know a very young looking girl that that probably around the. Uh, the same age as him and her name is Kizara and so right away Kizara she was definitely upset and she was scolding him but the main thing she was like upset, like upset about was the fact that Rentaro here did not tell her about the sale because she was like very hungry and she wanted a steak and we heard her stomach growling and that right there you know just cracked me up and so then after you know Rentaro here was like done with, with, with his balls and apparently, you know, these two, like, grew up together because because apparently, you know, when Rotaro here, he actually grew up, grew up without his parents. And when he was younger, he was saying that, you know, they were still out there 
he was going to find them, but now that he's all grown up, he actually thinks that, that they died in a war against the Gastria. So who knows, you know, what's like really going on with that. But I do hope that, that they uh, expand more on his past because it definitely sounds interesting. But we see now that he that he goes to this scientist and we did not learn her name in, in, this, in this episode at all because he kept calling her sensei. And so when he does find her, she actually scares him with, with like this uh this dead body. And so apparently, you know, his uh, this uh the scientist or sensei, she is definitely not nice. She does not bite her tongue at all, and she would like turn him a new one. And we see now that in this beaker, she had made like the purple slop. I don't even know what you would call that, but she has served that to him and for herself as well. And so basically, you know, we, we should learn more about the Gastria. And we see now, you know, like, and, and basically, you know, that's it. We we just learn more about them. I really won't, I really won't go into like detail about that because I feel like the ending was like definitely a lot more important. So 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 now after he was done with his sensei, we actually go to to his home, and we see now that you know him and him and Inju, they actually live together. Oh, and I also forgot that apparently, you know, uh, Rentaro here, he is actually in love with uh, with Kisara. And that was it. It's kind of obvious. Like, I, I did feel like there was there was something more between them. You know, even though they grew up, it does make sense that, that you know, he does love her. And apparently, you know, she has these older brothers that that uh, she had, that she had to protect, you know, Rentaro from. And now he was saying, or... Or now he thinks that he's actually strong enough to protect her now. So I do wonder, you know, will Kisara be in, like, any kind of danger in, like, future episodes? But now we go to Rantaro home, and we see now that him and Inju, they live together. And he made all these dishes with, like, with uh, these bean sprouts. And so now uh, Inju here... Like, apparently, you know, she she, she, uh, she she got out the shower because she, like, all she had was, like, a towel wrapped around her body. And we see now that Rentaro here did not like that too much. And so now, and so now he, like, told her to go put some clothes and she had put on this dress. And so after they were done eating and he had washed the dishes, you know, like, uh, Inju here had wanted to do one more thing. But apparently, you know, Rentaro wasn't having that. So after he had gave her this shot, which I'm not really sure what's it for because they didn't really, they, 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 they did not really expand on that. They, they just showed, they just showed him giving her a shot and, and like that was it. But now that he went to bed, Inju here, you know, kind of got upset. And so she like opened the door and attacked him. And that was, it was funny, you know, even though they didn't show it, you could definitely hear it. And so now the following morning here, they they wake up and we see now that you know they had they had uh, slept together, but apparently you know it wasn't it wasn't like it, you know the most nicest way, because we kind of see that you know that the uh, the cover that was on them, it, it was like kind of like messed up, and and so we just see like you know like their uh, their their top halves was like almost off what what they were, like sleeping on, but we see now that they're watching the news. And apparently we see these two very important figures. And uh, an Inju here was like saying, you know, something about Retaro being related to one of them. But they didn't expand on that. So I do wonder what's going on right there. But we see now that Inju, she's like playing the role of a little kid. And, and, and she's going to like middle school right now. And so she was saying that, you know, that uh, Retaro here should like be in her class. Or, or he should, like, wait to get into high school. And he was saying that it would be, like, real awkward or weird for, like, a 23-year-old to be a high school student. And so now I'm thinking that, you know, if, if 10 years have passed since that little flashback that we saw, that, that would mean that he was 13, you know, back in, at, the beginning of, at the beginning of the episode. But to me, he did not look, you know, 13. He looked, like, he looked like, younger than that, like, almost 10. But apparently he was, he was 13, you know, during that time. And so we see now that, you know, after he drops it off, uh, Angel here, you know, has this friend. And they, they were like, talking about this show. And so now we, so now we actually learn more about the uh, about the gastria. About how normally they infect their victims through, like, bodily fluids. But there was this rare case where a, a pregnant woman could actually be affected through her mouth. And the virus here would actually, you know, like, infect the offspring. And so these these are children that were affected, 
they are known as the cursed children and they are all girls and so you know they're they're a distinctive trait as their red eyes and luckily you know nobody has figured out that angel here is one of them because we saw before she had attacked the spider you know her eyes her eyes you know had turned red and so now so now we have red Taro here who have went to this this destroy bridge and so we see that these that these metal uh monolith I, I think that's that, that's how you say it they were actually made of the same metal that that that, that his uh his bullets come from and because these uh, because these uh these these gastrias don't like that they they are kind of like they're, they're kind of able to like to keep them out but at the same time not really because they could still be affected by it but now we see because of that now we see because of that I'm guessing that it's able to keep out those like giant kind of creatures that we saw in the beginning of the episode. But but these children, these these are uh, these cursed children, even though they were indeed a curse given given to humanity by the uh, the Gastria, they are they are luckily be like they are they are luckily able to destroy them as well. So they're like humanity last hope. But I do wonder if if we have, you know, uh Retaro and and uh, an angel working together. Does that mean that all those girls that we saw across the bridge? Does that mean that, that that they're also you know working with like other people? But those 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 kids though, I definitely feel bad for them because yeah, the virus it it is working on them, but it's working slowly. So at the same time, you know, even though they are humanity's last hope, that that does mean that they're like kind of dying, right? Or maybe that they could lose control and just kill you know all the humans. So this, this this series is definitely very interesting. So I am glad that I'm going to review this for you guys. And the first episode definitely caught my attention. And for some reason, you know, like the, the opening song, it reminded me of one of one of the of one of the opening song for Attack on Titan as well. And I do know that that the uh, the, the voice actor that, that that did Aaron and Attack on Titan, he he he's also Mataro on this one. So maybe that that's why I'm kind of getting like the Attack on Titan vibe from this. But overall, this episode, it, de it definitely impressed me and grabbed my attention. So I'm definitely glad I'm reviewing this because I, I will be doing this every week for you guys. So let me know what you thought, let me know what you thought about the first episode because I would love to hear your thoughts on this. But as always, please do not forget to like the video and subscribe because that really helps me out. And you guys take it easy and I will see you all next time.